Shaping the workforce of tomorrow is serious business. Contracting budgets challenge educators everywhere to keep curricula relevant and rewarding as businesses continue to grow globally and technologically. Today, companies require more sophisticated employees in every position, including entry-level jobs. The stakes are high. The Alliance for Excellent Education calculated the bill to businesses and colleges as they train high school graduates who are not prepared to enter the workforce or secondary education, and it's not pocket change. In Winchester and Frederick County, as in much of the country, the business landscape is transitioning. The growth of service-oriented jobs is outpacing that of manufacturing jobs, with each requiring more advanced technical competencies. While manufacturing remains a strong component of our work profile, the government and healthcare employment sectors have grown dramatically over the last two decades. Two sectors that are growing significantly in the Winchester Frederick County area have been healthcare and government. As far as the skills that we're going to need in the healthcare industry in the future, um, I think all across the nation there is an aging out that's going on um, and we anticipate over the next 15 years that we may have half of our staff turn over. Employers are the starting point. They're looking for specific skill sets in their new hires. When I look at hard skills, looking at uh, employee that has maybe some pretty good math skills. We look for literacy. Everybody needs to be able to read effectively. We look for numeracy. People need to be able to work with numbers at a very basic level. We have values that we expect all of our employees coming in to adhere to. But what we've been seeing lately on the recruits we're hiring, they don't have communication skills. The texting has taken away their ability to talk on the phone orally. Um, it's really taken away their ability to, to communicate in writing in full sentences with grammar, proper punctuation. The world is going to belong to communicators. There's really only four things, characteristics ultimately determine long-term success in business. The ability to read, count, tell time, and get up early. So we're looking for team sports, we're looking for debate team, we're looking for uh, you know, members or hopefully leaders in whatever kinds of groups, people that have to come together to make decisions um, and to find out what's going to work for everyone and move forward that way. Work experience can be volunteerism. And I think also Kraft is really big on the um, humanitarian side. We donate a lot to a lot of outside agencies and when um, we had the ability to see somebody that's been doing that on their resume, it's a really plus because they can continue to come in here and help us with some of the things we're trying to do in the community. Individuals need to be able to do an electronic job search and complete an electronic application to do an application online. I also think that there needs to be a focus on teaching business skills, your presentation skills, your interviewing skills, negotiation and conflict management skills, so um, students are equipped to work in a team environment and work directly with customers handling those important issues. It's imperative that kids or individuals come in here with some problem solving skills so that when they get out there and on the floor that they not only do their particular job but they have the ability to help the team to solve problems. Employers realize these are tall orders but preparing area students to enter a workforce that thrives in a changing economy is paramount to Winchester and Frederick County's ongoing success. Each year, nearly 2,000 students graduate from the area's high schools, Lord Fairfax Community College, and Shenandoah University. Programs such as the Winchester Frederick County Economic Development Commission's Career Awareness Tours expose students, guidance counselors, and key education decision makers to the local work environment firsthand. 
One segment of the EDC's tours is designed for high school students to visit area businesses and learn what's required to work there. Another segment informs area educators, administrators, and policymakers about the area's workforce needs. The underlying objective of the tours is to answer the question with shrinking budgets. How can the approach of local educators adapt to accommodate a changing work climate? In a 2010 study by the American Association of Colleges and Universities, U.S. corporate executives agreed that, yes, changes in education are needed. They offered suggestions for students and educators from a business perspective, ranging from analytical projects and internships to hands-on science projects and ethnic diversity training. So educators play a critical role in the future success of employees in the work environment. And I think the critical things that teachers can do is one, make sure and enforce the responsibilities for students to be turning assignments in on time, to actually involve them and ensure they're engaging in the conversations in the classroom, to help build teamwork and help them solve a problem as a team, to study information, to understand why is this problem happening so that they can come up with the solutions. Generally speaking, I think that the educational system needs to be focused as much on marketable skills as possible. Some of the things that we'd like to see the school system do are discuss how to write a resume, how to interview, um, sit down and have one-on-one -on -one discussions in class about what is appropriate in a response to an answer to an interview question. We need to um, have greater team-oriented projects. And it boils down to some very basic things which I think the schools can help with. Uh, one is an underlying level of energy. A person with an underlying level of energy always will achieve more and succeed, have a higher probability of success than a person without an underlying level of energy. And that underlying level of energy is by and large voluntary. And as much as possible, we need to be identifying what is a realistic skill set for this particular individual. Where can this particular individual fit in in the economy and what skills can we give that individual for the individual to be successful? Smart people are actually pretty easy to find. They're a dime a dozen. Smart people are on every street corner. But you show me a guy who, or a lady who's a natural leader. It's hard to define, but I know it when I see it. They've got a little bit more initiative. They've got a little bit more sparkle in the eye, a little more gravel in their gut. They have the ability to make people around them feel secure and feel as if they're being led. The toughest part of the workforce equation, of course, is finding ways to implement changes to the existing education system. Employers know area education budgets are stretched thin. With so many state and federal demands, adding elements to any curriculum won't be easy. But collaboration between educators and employers is crucial. Establishing ongoing two-way communication that includes discussing needs and expectations at all levels is key. We have Fisher Scientific Education Forum and what we've done with them is we partner with local universities and high schools and we bring in top scientists and new technologies so that teachers can understand what employers are working are looking for, in particular new applications, new science evolution, so that they can bring those information and that learning back to their classrooms. One program in which we've participated that we've found particularly effective is a program called Teachers in Industry. And essentially what we and another of our other companies participating in the program do is we take teachers from the K-12 through public school system and we embed them into our companies. We try to put them in a position where they're right on the front lines, perhaps working a project through from beginning to end, but seeing how the skills that they're teaching in the classroom are actually applied on a day-to-day -day basis. We, ha we at Kraft have, are really big on interns. So we have a process where we do bring in a lot of the college 
um, interns usually in the, either their sophomore year. And we also have a new program um, that we have with our, it's a partnership with our nursing department and local high school um, counselors. They come in twice a year and there's a collaboration on talking about the needs we have in our organization. Um, so there's a partnership that is uh, created in that way with our local communities. College professors and placement people, it's a, it's a similar message in that help us to reach um, the students early so that they can see us as a primary choice as opposed to a secondary and they can see us as an exciting, viable, uh, diversified profession. We have a number of partnerships with local high schools um, across the entire region. We have camps where students come on board to our organizations um, and they learn about the healthcare industry. Um, we have junior volunteer programs. We have Girl Scout programs where they earn badges in healthcare. So we'd like an earlier opportunity. We'd like to bring them here, let them see what we do, um, working as externs or interns, um, and let them get a feel for what we're really about. There is no better time than now to begin shaping a local workforce that keeps pace in a global economy. One that continues to prove Winchester and Frederick County are unmatched as a site to build a business in Virginia. Because our workforce and our educators understand what it takes to succeed.